In the workshop today, we've got not one, but two very special Porsche 992 GT3s. The first of which is this Porsche GT3 Manthe Racing Package. So this is an optional extra you can spec at Porsche uh, to have the Manthe Racing upgrades on the car. So they include things like upgraded suspension, upgraded aero and brakes. We're gonna be adding a few more things to this package to make this car even greater and make it perform even better out on circuit. The second Porsche GT3, we're gonna be transforming that machine from a standard Porsche 992 GT3 into a full on track weapon. So before we get into the upgrades that we'll be fitting today, we thought we'd just run you through the Manthe racing package and what that kit includes. At the rear of the car, you've got the aero discs on the wheels. This is quite a signature look of a Manthe car and it's quite a, a visual clue that the car has the kit fitted. These discs increase rear downforce at the back of the car and how they do that is they clean the messy air up that would otherwise be there from the rear wheels. As the wheels are spinning at really high speed, the spokes generate a lot of messy air that disrupts airflow down the side of the car. These discs are designed to clean that air up so that the airflow over the rear wing is a lot cleaner, giving more downforce at the rear wing, ultimately giving more rear traction, especially at high speed. So that's their function. It also comes with an upgraded rear carbon fiber wing, which has a more aggressive aero profile, and again, gives more downforce. It's got the four-way adjustable Manthe Racing coilovers. So these are manufactured by KW, and they give high speed bump and rebound adjustment and low speed bump and rebound adjustment, which gives plenty of adjustment to get this car handling exactly how we want it. A four-way coilover opens every door in terms of adjustment, so you can get it functioning perfectly around a circuit and also working and, and driving really nicely on a road too. The kit also comes with upgraded pads and lines on the brakes, so a little bit less fade in the pedal, a little bit less sponginess, and the pad compound is a bit more aggressive to give a little bit more bite on the OE ceramics as well. At the front of the car, you've got the uprated front splitter, again, giving more front downforce, and that kit, again, just gives more nose and more traction at the front end. So the combination of parts along with the rear diffuser too, giving that full underbody aero, gives the car a lot more downforce, and the suspension on the car makes it a lot easier to tune and to get handling perfectly, especially in a track setting. With all these awesome upgrades that are included in the Manthe package, you might now be wondering what we're gonna be doing to make this car even better. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be fitting our camber kit to this car to get even more grip out of this chassis. The 992 GT3 is a lot different to the 991 and all previous generations of the GT3 series in the way that it is now a double wishbone suspension system. So the 991s and previous were all McPherson strut, which is where the coilover comes out the top of the hub and is an active piece of the kinematics of that corner. So it controls the camber and the caster, for example. Whereas on a 992 GC3, the wishbones control all of that. So the upper wishbone and the lower wishbone are set and they control the camber of the hub and the caster of the hub as well. The way to adjust the camber as standard on this car is with a block that's been machined by Porsche in the upper wishbone and that bolts to the hub with an eccentric bolt. And this is where your camber adjustment takes place. As standard, this goes up to negative 2.8 degrees as absolute maximum, which when you're pushing on track, that's still not quite enough if you're using the car hard. You'll still be wearing through the outside edge of the tire a lot more than the inside edge, especially if you're using a stickier tire than it comes with a standard. So our blocks resemble the OEM part almost exactly. This is the OEM piece here. This is our piece here. So visually and aesthetically, very similar. However, ours have the holes machined in very slightly different places allowing for the increase in camber. So with our blocks, you can get up to negative 3.8 degrees of camber, which is a much sweeter setting when you're looking to get the most out of the tire and the chassis when it's being used out on track. This means we can get the tire working perfectly with the ground and maximize the traction, giving much reduced understeer. And alongside the shims at the rear, which make the rest of the kit up, we can ensure that the whole car has got as much lateral grip as physically possible. This 992 GC3 has come with the OEM carbon ceramic discs from Porsche. These discs last a lot longer than the steel equivalent. However, when you are pushing your car hard on track, you will start going through the discs at quite a rate. So it's well worth opting for a aftermarket upgrade, such as the surface transform disc. Not only are these discs better in performance over the OE carbon ceramic, they also cost a little bit less as well in terms of longevity and keeping the car on track at a lower cost. 
it makes a lot of sense to fit these discs and just put your OEM ones nice and safe in a box whilst you track your car. These discs run at a much cooler temperature than the OE discs when they're being pushed hard, which means that your pads last longer, there's less brake dust, which can really be a problem on the 992 GT3. And they also have much more stopping force due to the way these discs are manufactured. They're actually made in a completely different way to the OEM discs as they are layered sheets of carbon fiber sheet as opposed to chopped carbon in a resin mix, which gives them a lot more torsional rigidity, which is where all the braking force comes from and means that more force can go through these discs, which means more stopping power ultimately, which can really be felt inside the car as well. One of the real beauties of these discs is that they can actually be resurfaced as well. Whereas the OEM ceramics, if they start to groove or get, get worn down, they need to go in the bin and they get replaced with brand new ones. Whereas the surface transform discs can be skimmed two to three times, depending on how much skim needs, needs taken off on each step. And this means that the longevity of the disc and the usability is much more. We've got a set of these discs coming for this car. They're not here right now. They're going to be fitted to this car before it leaves us. Uh, so they're going to be going on at a later date, but we thought we'd just show you our display disc and I'll show you what's going to be going on this car down the line. One of the final upgrades we're going to be putting on this car is the addition of the fantastic Michelin Cup 2R tyre. So this is arguably the best road eagle tyre that you can bolt onto one of these cars. They are extremely sticky and they operate almost to the levels of a slick, even though they're still road legal and they are still cut. So they're an extremely efficient tyre and what these tyres allow us to do is get really aggressive settings on the car because we now have the grip from the tire to match the aggressive camber settings and toe settings that we're going to put on the car. The combination of having the right componentry along with the correct tire really means that you can push right to the limits of what a car is capable of and we can get as much from this 992 GT3 as physically possible. The final stage of the upgrades on this 992 GT3 is the complete suspension setup. So we're changing the settings over what the car came in with in quite a few different areas. The most obvious being the camber setting, mainly at the front and also at the rear. Now that we've got our blocks in there, we can achieve more camber than was possible before. This is a real requirement, especially with the Michelin Cup 2R tire on there, it demands more camber from the car. So we've now been able to set this up really aggressively. We've also altered the rake angle and the ride heights of the car. So we're giving it more rake angle, a more nose down attitude, which gives much more stable front end, much better turning, and even more stability at the front on brakes. We've also done a few aero tweaks. So the, the front Venturi ducts, we've opened them up fully to get more front downforce. And we've also set our toe settings onto this car as well as our anti-roll bar settings. So quite a lot of changes have been made to the suspension system compared to when it came into how it's going out. And it should now perform much better on track as we're able to use all of that tire and get the whole tire working now on the ground and make the, sh the chassis work dynamically exactly as we'd like it to. We're now onto our second 992 GT3. So this one came into as completely standard and it's taken a slightly different approach to the Manthi car. So it came in a completely stock car and we're turning it into a really track focused machine. So a little bit more hardcore and quite a bit more exciting to look at some of the components as well. So we'll take you through some of the upgrades that we fitted to this car. We fitted our track pack to this car as a, as a starting point. So what that includes is our camber blocks, similar to what we fitted on the Manthi car the rear camber shims, and it also comes with the front bump steer tie rod ends. So these are in there, basically when we're lowering the car, it removes the bump steer from the system. Now bump steer is most present on the Porsches on corner entry. So as you're turning your, your car into the corner on track, especially, you'll feel the car load. And often you just feel the need to just turn the steering a little bit more to get the nose in. It feels like understeer, even though the car's not understeering. And what that is, is as the car is loading one side, unloading the other, it actually very slightly steers the car back away from the corner as it's rolling, and that's bump steer. So by fitting these tie rod ends, we get rid of that. So all you do is you approach, you turn in, and you hold the same arc, and the car will hook up, and it will turn into the apex. So it makes the car feel a lot more connected to the driver and a lot more fluid out on circuit. The camber blocks, again, unlock even more camber potential from the car, which is what we really need on this car, especially because one of the plans for this car is to move towards slicks, which we'll get onto in a second. As well as the track pack, we've also fitted KW V5 Club Sport coilovers. These are a four-way coilover unit, similar to the Manthe Racing coilovers. However, these have been sprung for track use, so we've got a really nice spring rate on there. We've still got the four-way adjustable dampers, so we can really fine-tune the car out on track. And having the ability to fine tune the high speed and low speed bump and rebound means we can get the car running curbs, 
really smooth, really fast. And we can also get it loading through the corners like a really stiff machine. So it really unlocks the best of, of everything, really. We can keep it nice and supple over really fast impact situations like curbs. And then we can keep the car really nice and loaded through the corner to get as much grip transferred as possible through the camber and then through the tire into the ground. Something you may, might notice as being not standard is this AP Racing brake kit on the front. This is developed by a company called Essex Racing and they've developed this kit to fit under an 18 inch wheel for the 992 GT3. So this kit is actually slightly smaller than the OEM carbon ceramic brakes, which might seem a little counterintuitive. However, there are some benefits. So one benefit being the steel rotors are cheaper to replace and maintain on a track car. But the biggest benefit is that the smaller package will allow for an 18 inch wheel to go over the top, which is important for this car because one of the aims is to ultimately put the car over onto slicks, which come in the 18 inch size. So you wouldn't be able to get slicks for the standard wheels. So it's a lot easier to source slicks for an 18 inch rim, hence the move to the slightly smaller braking package. It's easier to get 18 inch slicks because they're actually used in the Carrera Cup Championship. So you can get the part one slicks for a cheaper rate on the market, nice and comfortably for motorsport. The majority of motorsport slicks are run on 18 inch wheels, which means that there's a lot more abundance of choice when it comes to a slick tire on an 18 inch wheel. At the rear of the car, we've also got the KWV5 Club Sport coilovers, which are still four way adjustable at the rear. Again, sprung with track use in mind. Again, we've got the SX Racing AP Racing brake kit to keep the diameter down to get an 18 inch rim over the top so we can look at running the slicks down the line when the driver's more confident with the car. Finally, we're going to fit our Suspension Secrets rear monoball kit. So this is a kit that monoballs the rear arms. We remove the standard rubber bush and we insert a solid rose jointed monobold arm into there. So we press our bushes in and then we're going to fit these back to the car. What this is going to do is remove a lot of the flex in the rear suspension system. So when we set that camber, as the car gets loaded, especially on a slick or a really sticky tire that's going to put a lot of force through it, it prevents the camber and the toe settings from changing through the corner. With the rubber bushes in there, as the car loads, the car is going to load the tire, push on the arm, and with the rubber bushes, it's very slightly going to move the arm with the load going through the bush. And this will affect the camber and therefore the toe setting. So through the corner, it can give a slightly different feeling car at different speeds depending on how much load is going through the tire. With the monoballs in there, it removes that. And so as the tire is loaded and pushes on, on the arm into the chassis, the force is directly transferred straight into the chassis. So the car moves faster and it will respond to input faster, but it'll also keep the camber setting and the toe setting that we install in the same place keeping the, the chassis nice and consistent and giving a really reliable car to the driver so he knows exactly what's beneath him. So we're going to be putting these bushes in now, get them installed. We're then going to be giving the car a full spanner check, getting it over to the ramp and giving it a full corner weight and alignment to get the most out of this car, set all the dampers up, and then this is ready to hit the track tomorrow. We've just completed the full setup on the blue 992. So that completes it now with a full track setup with all the components now installed. So that's the Manthi car and the car that came in as a completely standard car, now completely ready to hit the circuit. They are completely different machines underneath, but both with a similar purpose. So yeah, these guys are now ready to hit the track and get the most out of their 992 GT3s.